Strap yourselves in folks because today's video is something you're gonna want to watch because we are going to be purchasing the best business in GTA Online. That's right, our main man Desmond has scraped together a few million dollars to invest in a state-of-the-art nightclub for all of you party people to enjoy. So what are we waiting for? Let's get ahead and do this thing. Once we left our apartment, we walked over to the other side of the street, to where the Tony icon is located, and ended up getting a call from the man himself. Listen, this is uh, Tony Prince. I'll cut straight to the chase. I heard you were a savvy investor, shall we say? I can open you the best nightclub in the whole state, any of them, seriously. He seems to think that our boy Desmond is a, a savvy investor. I would probably have to question that just a little bit. Anyways, Tony wants to get back into the business, and with our money and apparent savviness, we can run a state-of-the-art nightclub. It was just up to me to choose what location that I preferred the most. Heading onto the Maze Bank Foreclosures website, I took a little bit of a look around. There were the expensive options up in Vinewood, the cheap options down in Elysian Island and LSIA, and a few other non-notable ones. But two locations really stuck out to me, and they were the Del Perro and Vespucci Canal locations respectively. They were both located closely to my apartment and other businesses, and they seemed like the best option for myself. However, before making my final decision, I wanted to go take a look at them for myself. So first, we ran on over to the Del Perro location, not too far from where I currently was. It had a great location and looked very pristine on the inside. Well, as pristine as a nightclub can get anyways. I walked downstairs, took a shot of whiskey, and headed onto the dance floor. There was somewhat of a crowd, and the music was decent. Desmond even got a little dance going on. But, I don't know. Something about this place just didn't make my balls tingle. I think I gotta go and check out that Vespucci spot. I finally managed to get outside, and it was suddenly daytime. I didn't think I was in there for that long, but I guess that's what the clubbing experience does to you. Makes you lose all sense of time and reality. Which, to be fair, is exactly what I want if I'm going to open one myself. The longer people stay inside, the more money for me to collect. Anyways, we headed on over to the other location. This one was a bit further away from my apartment and didn't have as prime of a real estate, but I was still intrigued, so I headed inside, took another shot of whiskey, and once again headed to the dance floor. And oh boy, this place was a totally different experience. People dancing everywhere, banging tunes, playing left and right, and a concerning amount of underage drinking taking place. It was perfect. I took a quick step outside, got a breath of fresh air, and made my decision. I wanted to purchase this location. So I headed back onto the website to make the purchase. As usual, I didn't go for any cosmetic upgrades because they're a waste, except for the name of the club, which I opted to change to Technology. Big up the German techno scene, am I right? All in all, it cost me just under 1.4 million to purchase this place, but I imagine the return on my investment will come extremely quick, with the nightclub being arguably the best business in GTA Online. But with all that said and done, I headed inside and stumbled upon a washed up TV host doing his best to attach any meaning to his worthless life. This is Famer Shame Live with your host, Ah, uh, no one cares. Thankfully, my guy Tony came in to shut him down, and this guy really knows how to make an entrance. Piss off, Laszlo. What? This is a nightclub. This live version of an awful TV show is not happening. Uh, uh, but Tony... Oh, but Tony, please, nothing. Tony, please, I'm desperate. <laughs> Listen, I love narcissism. I built a career on narcissism. I stare into the mirror and beat off like a real man. Damn, that's kind of hot. I ran the fucking 1980s. I was the 1990s, and I'm back. Get me a DJ! But, Tony, I, I, I'm the DJ. <laughs> I'm the, no, you're not a fucking DJ. You're a dick. Okay, I'm sorry for showing so much of this cutscene, but I just love this guy. Tony is a bloody G. I wish I could have him run all my businesses. Anyways, after that painfully long exposure to Laszlo, Tony took me aside to give me a tour of the nightclub basement where I will be able to run all my less than legal business operations. But before long, we were exposed to another strange person. I swear, Los Santos breeds these weirdos like the League of Legends community breeds degenerate toxic humans. English Dave was the new man I was introduced to, and while he wasn't as bad as Laszlo, I get the feeling this guy is going to pester and annoy me for the rest of my playthrough. Just a hunch though. Finishing up on our little business meeting, we have decided on a DJ to open with, by the name of Solomon. Dave will do the job of reaching out to him, and we can hopefully come to a deal. Tony left us with two tasks to complete. Pick up some staff members, and go steal a sound system from a ritual sacrifice taking place in the desert. It's not just me that thinks that sounds really strange, is it? Moving on, and we finally have free range to move around in our nightclub. Club. And this place is going to need a lot of work to become the best in the city. But with the power of Desmond, Tony, English Dave, and Laszlo, I guess, I'm sure we can make it happen. But first, we need to complete the setup missions. So I hopped on my computer and began my first mission. 
gathering the staff. It was a simple enough task. Hop into the nightclub provided vehicle, even though I feel my panto is more stylish, and pick up our major staff members, a bartender, a security guard, and a techie to run the warehouse downstairs. I first headed over to the beach to pick up Connie, and I was quite concerned about her current state of being. Is she alright? Next, we headed up to Vinewood Hills to pick up our little nerd, Johan. He was hiding out in an alleyway with some biker friends, and I'm not sure if he is deaf or just stupid, but it took him a concerning amount of time to realize I wanted him to get into the goddamn car. Eventually, he made his way inside, and I- Lad, what are you doing? I'm not sure what the hell is wrong with Johan's friends, but they picked the wrong guy's car to try him out. I had to go teach them a lesson, which turned out to be a lot more difficult than I originally anticipated. Is he invincible? Nah, 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 what is this? What the hell? Oh, come on, man. <laughs> oh, god damn it. Yeah, so apparently I'm not allowed to kill the semi-innocent. I'm not bothered about failing the mission. That dickhead deserved it. But I am upset that it disappointed Tony. You know... I kind of thought this was the easy part of the operation. I'm sorry, Tony. I didn't know that would happen. He's like a father figure to me. So I made my way back to the nightclub for attempt number two, and I picked up Connie once again, and then decided to grab the bouncer Marcel next. My thinking is that if I had a bouncer first, then there would be no trouble with the bikers. And luckily I was right, as none of Johan's circle jerk tried to mount my car this time. However, there was another player on a bike that had been following me around, and after accidentally running over his bike, I heard a shot taken at me from the distance. Oh well. After that, I drove on back to the nightclub to finally complete the mission in only one more attempt than the other 99.9% .9 of the people playing this game took. God, I really am pathetic. The second setup mission was to collect the equipment for the nightclub, or more specifically the sound system. It's not like Desmond is a multi-millionaire and could just buy some speakers, or the famous happy Tony could use his connections to get us one. No, we have to drive out to the middle of the Los Santos County to steal it from a festival that Tony described as a ritual sacrifice. Man, the things I do just to add a few extra zeros to my bank account. Jeez. Anyways, we head on up to the location marked on our map, and casually walk through the crowd of drugged up hippies and concerningly dehydrated partygoers and hopped into the bus. I was surprised to see no one stopping me, but considering this crowd could barely stop themselves from running into an oncoming vehicle going less than 5 kilometers an hour, I'm not that surprised. And even less surprising is the fact that the average speed of this vehicle didn't seem to go much above 5 kilometers an hour the whole way back. Okay, that's obviously hyperbole, but seriously, come on. Does Rockstar have some weird fetish of forcing us to traverse Los Santos in the slowest modes of transport physically possible? I wouldn't be surprised if for their next DLC they make us hop on a poker sip from the airport up to Mount Chiliad. Actually, that'd be pretty cool. I somehow managed to deliver the bus and equipment back to the nightclub with the giant glowing skull still attached. Now, don't get me wrong, we did have a few minor hiccups along the way. What is going on? Ah, uh, hello? Alright, I guess I have to do this then. But we did manage to get the speaker system back in passable condition in the end. Somehow. Now, we have our staff and we have our equipment. The last thing we need is a beat-dropping, panty-popping monster of a DJ to run this place. And that's where Solomon comes in. He is currently making his way to Los Santos from Europe on a private jet. So English Dave and I headed on over to the airport to pick him up. By the way, I just have to mention this again. Why am I, the owner of the nightclub, doing grunt work like valet service and equipment sourcing? Couldn't I get someone like an assistant to do this work? You know what, never mind, I take it back. Anyways, once we got to LSIA, we get a call from Solomon, and it's not good news. It seems his top-of-the-range pilot decided to take a quick nap, probably due to the copious amount of <coughs> drugs he had been taking. While the pilot may have been having a nice time off in La La Land, it wasn't looking so good for our DJ. The plane was now on course to crash probably somewhere in Los Santos. Please crash into my CEO office, please crash into my CEO office. As much as I prayed for the rogue jet to finally do what I haven't been able to and take out my assistant, it seems Solomon's skills as a DJ are quite transferable to being a pilot. Now I've seen David get alive and there is no way I would ever want that man flying me to a destination. But this is GTA, so whatever, let's not question it. Solomon somehow took control of the plane and began to head over to Los Santos County to try and land the thing. But running in line with my luck this episode, just as I passed the casino, the game crashed, making this the second nightclub setup mission I would have to restart. Uh, my game just crashed apparently. <laughs> 
Oh my god! I was not a happy boy. And problems would continue to persist as when I logged back into GTA Online, Desmond apparently had a stroke and lost the ability to walk. It was replaced by a strange new technique in sliding and shuffling that dramatically decreased his movement speed but did increase his overall levels of chill. I eventually made it over to my car in record time and tried to hop in, but as you can imagine, that didn't work either. I finally gave up and joined an invite-only session so that I wouldn't be hassled by those pesky modders who I imagine are the culprits behind Desmond's less than normal behavior. We finally managed to get back to the nightclub where we could restart the mission. Then as usual, we drove to the airport, had a big scare because, oh no, our DJ might die. Ah, who could have seen that coming, right? Thankfully, this time the game didn't crash and I made it out to Blaine County. And even though our esteemed DJ was in a life and death situation, the bloody geezer in the seat next to me didn't hesitate to take light of the situation. No, Dave, not lift off. Our man's about to do the exact opposite of that and plummet into the ground and die. Could you take this a little bit more seriously, please? But due to the magical forces known as plot armor, Solomon managed to land the plane safely and walk it off like it was nothing. Hey, Solomon. Bonjour, moi, Dave. Where did you find the pilot? Oh, top of the range he was, son. No expense spared. Come here. I told you you were a miracle worker. But little did he know, he actually put himself in a more dangerous position by stepping into my car. I really don't know how Desmond got a license to drive. Trust me, I've done the driving exam in Australia, and that shit is unforgiving. He must have paid them off or something. Though, that is to be expected from a man like him. Anyways, after all that, Solomon somehow got into the nightclub in one piece. Somehow, I feel the few seconds of exposure he had with Laszlo did more damage to him than the whole journey here. Tonight, at the opening of Technology, you're going to join me, DJ Laszlo, in welcoming my very best friend. I discovered him in Ibiza, which is in the Netherlands. Oh, Christ, dude. It's Ibiza and it's in Spain, you moron. Come on. Please, all of you, give it up for the one, the only, Solomon! Let me know if you want me to MC. Uh, let me think about it. Okay, great. He wants me to beatbox. I'm gonna fucking get laid. This guy needs to be put in a grave six feet under. My god, he's an embarrassment to humanity. I thought Lester was bad. This guy's on another level. Moving on from that traumatic showing of pure blind confidence, we headed outside to pick up some new clothes to fit the nightclub aesthetic. Now that everything was set up, I wanted to join in on the fun, and spending a stupid amount of cash on digital fabrics is apparently the way to do that. Guys, I think I have a shopping problem. As usual, I picked up an outfit preset and then spiced it up with a little bit of my own personal touches. After a lot of trial and error, I finally came out with an outfit that symbolized a lack of critical thinking and good life decisions. Perfect for going to the club. Although the reason I'm actually sick right now is because I went to a club. So this is kind of a self roast. Now that we have set up our nightclub and gotten into outfit, what comes next in our list of things to do? Well, if you have ever run a nightclub before, you would know that setting up your underground drug selling business is the way to go. Wait, that's not normal? Oh. Well, maybe I should do something else. So we went ahead and bought the equipment upgrade for just over $1.4 million. This will speed up the productivity of our warehouse technicians, making our stock fill up faster. Speaking of technicians, we then went ahead and hired a few more and assigned them to the various different businesses we had. One was assigned to cargo and shipments, another to sporting goods, and another to organic produce. I then went ahead and hired one final technician. Now you might be wondering, why would you hire another technician if there's not a business for him to be assigned to? Well, that's where things get interesting, because today we are not just purchasing a nightclub, we are also going to be investing in our second MC business as well. Can you guess what it is? Okay, time's up. It's the <coughs> snow factory. It's definitely not called something else that could demonetize my video. Anyways, we purchased the snow factory at Alamo C for just under a million dollars. Of course, we could have saved up more and invested in a location in Los Santos, but for now, this business is only going to be used to fill up the nightclub warehouse, so I won't need to come and visit it that often. After confirming our purchase, we drove over to the lockup to begin the setup mission, which compared to the living hell I was put through for the nightclub, was like a nice walk in the park. Just a quick drive over to Polito Forest to pick up the vehicle and delivering it back to my lockup. Nice and easy. With that done, we swiftly made our way back to the nightclub and assigned our final warehouse technician to the, um, <coughs> snow factory. And while our warehouse isn't fully stocked with businesses, it's pretty darn close. So I'm very excited for the absolute stacks of cash that are about to flow in. Now, my last video was all about the Criminal Enterprises update. If you haven't checked it out, make sure to go watch it after this video. And in that video, I didn't discuss the changes to the nightclub because I didn't own it yet, obviously. But now I do. So let's go ahead and get into that. There are two major changes to the nightclub. 
Number one is that when entering a nightclub, there is a chance for a random event where there will be a guest or VIP causing some type of trouble. It is my job to kick them out, take them to the hospital, or drive them home. This will then increase the nightclub popularity, making sure that the daily passive income can stay at $50,000 per day, which is very nice. And secondly, there is a new type of mission through contacting Johan. You can go ahead and call him on your phone, but I decided to go speak to him in person. Listen, I told the other guys I party upstairs sometimes. Just if they ask, you know, play along. That's a little bit rude, Gohan. I'm right here, bro. I'll fight. I'll fire you. I can do that. You know, I'm getting really sick of this guy. From his friends trying to ruin my ride to this, I'm beginning to wonder why we even hired him in the first place. Anyways, I headed back outside and tried to contact him again. And oh, look, now he picks up. Ugh, why do all the people I work with have such issues? I started up the new mission to source nightclub goods. With this mission, I can fill up the nightclub warehouse both faster and also to 100% capacity, even without having all the businesses, which is bloody fantastic. The missions themselves are pretty easy, but repetitive. They all basically consist of go to locations, steal supplies, and bring them back to the warehouse. Fortunately, they're not too difficult and don't take too long. This mission you're seeing right now was probably the slowest of the bunch to complete due to the initial location of the supplies being quite far away. And even this only took just about over five minutes and resulted in around 30K of warehouse goods being stored up. In this episode, we have spent over $4 million in the nightclub, snow factory, and uh, clothes. And with loads of new content from the drip feed still coming out every week, we need to regain that cash quick. So I'm going to use my magic powers to instantly fill up the nightclub warehouse so we can go ahead and sell it. And there we go. 100% stocked up warehouse in just under a second. And by one second, I really mean about four hours of grinding Johan missions and AFKing for the warehouse to fill up. But never mind that. Let's go ahead and make some money. First, I went ahead and took the money out of my safe and used it to upgrade my delivery vehicle. I upgraded the engine, transmission, and turbo to max out the speed because it's going to help us get to our destination faster and hopefully outrun any enemies that try to take us down. I also gave it a new paint job because why not? And I turned out to be right. While delivering our products, multiple sets of enemies tried to take us down, but they were no match for the might of my van, but apparently regular civilians were. Interesting. Anyways, we finally arrived at the drop-off location, and due to the increased first-time delivery bonus, we pocketed ourselves a nice 695,000 340 buckaroos. Oh, and if you're wondering where the extra million came from, I also did quite a few payphone hits, bunker cell missions, and custom bike deliveries during my warehouse grind. As you may be able to tell by now, I have no life. And with all that hard work out of the way, I was in the mood for a little bit of fun, and I know just the place. Oh, Desmond.